Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the sportiest stream. Hopefully, you all are doing well out there. It's been a little while since I've actually been able to do community matchups here in some of these smaller leagues. So again, apologies for that. I've been, you know, busy running that Prince Phoenix Cup now that it's concluded. We're back to a more usual schedule here on this stream. Welcome, everybody. It's nice to see you all here. We got some royalty series action here tonight. I'm Sporty FC, and if you don't know me, that's an interesting. I've been here for a very long time, but. These teams know me pretty well. In fact, we'll get to talk about all these matchups here. Team a and taking on Team Ignition. And later on, Swordfish Vortex taking on uh, the Hornets there. Again, both best of five matchups. But in the Royalty Series, and of course right now is when my allergies kick in. As, again, apologies on that one. We'll get these teams in any moment for this one. As, yeah, again, apologies on that. My allergies. Bad time to kick in, I guess, but... Uh, it's not that surprising. As this matchup, pretty fun. Actually, it's an all-star division matchup, so this is that PC1 level. Yeah, again, exceptionally... Ex you two, I think, what we're... We could potentially see here... Yeah, we're just trying to get some play to these players, but again, this is a matchup between two teams that are undefeated, both 4 and 0. Oh. Gotten to see both these teams at least once in the past. I know we got to see a and uh, most recently in their tournament, in the Paradise Crew Battles tournament. They had a rough time there. We get to see Team Ignition Week 1, uh, with obviously their early wins. We even got to see them, yeah, we got to see them Week 1 against Immortal Guardians. Since then, they have been nothing but... Perfect. It's ironic that every team that Flipout touches now seems to do so well because so often Flipout, he's known for creating pretty solid teams and then not being able to kind of work with them, get wins when they need it. But, well, I guess since the last season of the Skyward series, he's been able to earn his fortune around find teams that have done him very, very well. Let's go his next venture here with Team Ignition, fighting with Ruby and Cody, who I both long-time teammates have been on Ignition in the past a couple times together. Yes, have I talked to Cobra? I have. I don't think he's going to be joining, Briz. I'm sorry. Um, I talked to him. I don't think he's joining us here tonight, so... It'll be just me, though. Uh, don't worry, I will still be here for it, even though I've got a massive migraine and... Again, allergies are kicking in at the terrible time. Seriously, I'm struggling for you all out there, but I, I, I love doing this, and I want to get back to... Doing some community stuff. I was looking for that co-cast. I reached out to him. We'll see if he responds. If he does want to join, I'm more than happy to have him join us. But uh, for now, I have not received an answer on that. I'm sorry, Briz. Being a Briz, he'll be on the Hornets for that matchup afterwards. Actually, that's a team that Cody coaches. So Cody's going to be involved in both of these matchups. I'm sure he will enjoy that. Uh, but for now, we'll see how things go for him. In this match for Team Ignition, both these teams are 4-0 here tonight to Indy and, of course, Ignition. Two orgs. We've seen both these orgs a lot. Again, Ignition, mostly this roster. A and D will recognize from A and D Vixen, who have been on the stream twice uh, in the last week uh, here. But once, you know, on this stream for that upper round one matchup. Uh, upper one, round one matchup in the Women's Phoenix Cup, where they took on... Uh, uh, they took on, in, in a best of three, they took on their opponent, and where is it? In Pandora, where they lost 2-0, or maybe you'll remember them from only a few days earlier in the World Series, where they unfortunately also couldn't get the win against the Raging Wolves. This is their main team, again we saw them uh, a, little, a little over a week ago in that Paradise Crew Battles uh, qualifiers in those, I almost said show matches, their Crew Battles tournaments. All of you really need to know about these team. Solid 3v3 team. They again are both at the top here of division. So someone's gonna lose that undefeated record tonight. And you know, both these teams being 4 0. Really gonna be a, quite a battle to see who will take that one. Again, if we take a look at our schedule one more time before we get into that matchup. Again, that match afterwards will be Swordfish Vortex and the Hornets. We have not seen Swordfish at Esports on the stream in a very long time. So this is a great. Uh, this is a great time to see them back as 
And again, we'll get this one back. Because also, hopefully, we won't have router issues like we had all of last week. There's a reason why I had a producer uh, for my stream. As thank you for the follow there, Jane. As noticed, I think I forgot to turn on my alerts. Let's see if I can turn on my alerts while we're at that, so. Apologies on that, everyone. Let me make sure it's fixed. Yeah, you're right. My alerts don't have sounds. I just did a test follow. And my alerts don't have sounds. So one second, everybody. Is it 40% is what I usually go with? Oh, wait, I gotta save first. One sec. Test follow. Yeah, that sounds about right, right? Yeah, 40% works. Let me quickly get those sound alerts. I did not have them on during the tournament. For obvious reasons, we do not. We do not want to have a sound alert uh, during that, but we're putting them back on for these minutes. So, hopefully, let me just make sure I get that done. I forgot to turn this on back uh, when my stream ended, so, just real quick. So, apologies on that, but lucky enough, I did hear from these teams. Uh, they might be a slight bit late, so we'll. Wait on that is there we go confirmation everybody's in so one sec and there we go the test sub perfect all right we're back good to go so again apologies on that have to make sure we tested out those alerts so i won't be doing that again until one of you follows or subs or however you guys want to support let's just get into this matchup I i'm talking a lot to you guys i know you're here not for me you're here for the rocket league let's be real honest so let's uh Let's not halt and falter. Let's just get right into it here. You guys want to see best of fives? We'll bring you the best of fives. As we start off with our undefeated all-star matchup, Team Ignition returns to the stream again. This time to take on a recent invited Team A&D. One best of five series coming up here to start your night in the loyalty series. A&D on the blue and Ignition on the orange. Welcome to what should be some pretty solid action here. As this time, Ignition again, where you have seen this roster, just they have such good chemistry, it really does feel like Whip Out and, uh, and Ruby really do work together on that offense. You see a lot of times Cody sits back, and for good reason, he did it on uh, the Ignition Blackline Championship Series roster that was able to uh, make some pretty strong headway. Uh, in the uh, in the contenders division now, they're gonna have to work together here. As oh, a mistake there from Ruby Atachi. That one cleared away by Flipout, and Ignition already getting themselves in the hot water. Here's another bad touch from Flipout. Cody gets the dunk, and right now Ignition looking a bit panicked early on. Team A&D not hesitating to bring the offense early to bring that pressure early too. They will now bring the response. Ruby Cody can't get the shots. About already up, but again, A&D just a little bit faster right now. Again, for both these teams, they have not lost yet this season. Both neck and neck in that race for that number one overall seed. There's only one other team that's undefeated. There, whoever wins this one is almost certainly the top team in the division. They're almost certainly going to be leading that going into next week, but know that if they are both at the top, someone's going to lose, and well, they've got to both be pretty solid at fighting for that position. Both these teams having such successful weeks. It's a six-week season as well. So close to having a perfect season. They're only two wins away. But a and not looking to let it happen easily. There's Atachi can't get the shot on. Flip out. We'll clear this one out. And Team Ignition back the other way. Demo from Atachi. Ducky will keep this one close. And... And you're seeing that A&D, just the pace that they bring. There's a reason why this team was scary in threes. Even in that pair of screw battles where they were uh, one of the lowest ranked teams in that tournament. This team is just a 3v3 team all around. They did struggle though in those twos and 1v1 game modes. That's where their rank difference really came to haunt them in a tournament that was made for GC3s when they are only GC1. So far... Team Ignition holding on well, but they gotta break out easily here. Flip out all by himself, and 
You get the sense that Ignition don't want to push people in that midfield. Again, this is a team that looks stressed, just feels stressed. For good reason. The pace of A&D is one that you cannot mess with. For Ignition, you're going to have to get kind of messy with this one because A&D are not going to give them space. They're going to slowly break their way through, waiting on those opportunities. Unless Ignition can find some plays upfield, they're going to be stuck on defense until eventually they'll give one up. So far, they've held on tight. Itachi now, cleared by Ruby as he'll bounce off Itachi as well. Ignition, here's their chance. Flip out, what a pass across. Ruby, oh, saved away there by Bucky. And Team Ignition, heading back, but a double commit. Means Flip out's going to waste some time. Itachi beats him on the jump. Ruby now, all by himself, will flick this to the corner. And it's Ignition on the ball again. As Cody can't find the shot on it. Flip out the will. Demo in the backfield. Flip out. Trying to take that one, but his shot's too weak. Ignition will have to try a different way to breaking through that defensive back line. For A and D, even when one player is removed, there's always someone to fill in, and there's always a good amount of time wasting that they work with. But that's a great beat. Cody's off the crossbar. Ruby can't put it on either. As it taunts you with another block. Flip out. Saved by A and D with a double commit. And now Ducky will go the other way. Team Ignition. Taking their time here down that back line. Flip out to the back wall. Ruby cannot find the beat on Bucky. And it's Ignition still. I just can't win in the midfield. Offense sure is a great thing, but we know that A&D can hold this offense a whole lot better once they get it. Ignition have not been able to find many openings, but this might be another one. But Cody will miss it on the jump. Steal the 50 from Ruby, and that's gone to net. Team A and D are holding on here. As time running out in game one, no goals scored. And it may stay that way unless something miraculous happens. Bucky looking to make it himself. Got that touch too, but he couldn't get the, uh, the demo on Cody. And now Flipout's got the beat. This one could be open here. Off a back wall. Atachi will keep away. Ruby jumping. Look for that pinch. He has kept it up, but Cody's going to shoot this one. And he will be too low. And this is overtime here in game one. No goals scored. Both these teams keeping it competitive. Oh, but maybe not for long. Ducky, Bucky. Oh, that needed to go in. Team AD could have ended it there. The shot goes wide. An uncharacteristic mistake from the AD offense. Now, Ducky, his chance. Oh, a great final touch. And the dunk, too. Ducky puts it in. Team AD lead the series. Just look at that consistency. That's the kind of touches that AMD have been looking for at the end of game number one. A back and forth affair. You really felt like any team could have won that one, but it's AMD on a great solo play winner. Take it in overtime. For Team Ignition. Their offense was not all that active that game. Felt like it was one that it is time to set things up. And against Andy, we're just seeing that they're bringing that pressure that you really can't wait on them to make the plays themselves. You have to be able to attack them head on, straight on. As we'll get ourselves here in the game number two. These teams readying up very quickly, actually. A lot faster than I thought we would see from them. But here we go. Game two. The series only continues onward. And for Team Ignition, the major thing they're going to need to focus on this series, after what they saw in Game 1, is just getting themselves on offense a lot more often, as now, follow from Drippy. Thank you for the follow, Drippy. Welcome to the Sweaty Stream here. you got a great matchup here. Team A&D and Team Ignition, the top teams in the uh, Royalty Series. Back at it again. Ignition was able to take down another top team last week. A&D is a much tougher challenge, and you get the sense from these high-flying solo plays that they have it here is oh, a whiff from Ruby. Ignition trying to find control, but A&D have them red. Itachi will look to goal, and Ruby's been bumped, and Flipout didn't even go for it there. He had no boost. 
And Team A and D have slowly picked apart Team Ignition. As that little bump there, that's all they needed. Ruby couldn't make the save, and yeah, Team Ignition getting the battle of their lifetime. Again, offense is so hard to come by for this team because A and D are just so consistent at being aggressive, but I may have overcommitted there. Ducky can't get back. Flip out will answer. Team Ignition with the response. And it's flip out to go that one on target. It's Ignition's first of the series. As this game tied at one. Much, many more goals this game now than what we saw last game. It's the kind of incrementation that we were expecting, I think, in a series like this. But still, with how these teams have been playing, you never truly know. It's a win from Ruby. Oh, that was about as routine as they get. Ruby's going to be pretty unhappy with himself for that one. Because uh, I know Ruby well enough. That is, simply puts him go, trying a little too hard on that spin. He was trying to look for the perfect touch there to try to find uh, his teammate in that corner. He really didn't need to do that. He just needed to focus on hitting the ball. It's a whiff here that's costed his team here. Not the first time we've seen Ruby whiff the ball in uncharacteristic positions like that. You really can't afford to make those mistakes against a team like A and D who will not give them that opportunity so easily. This one punched ahead. Team A and D. Pitching ignition on a, a couple of whiffs here. Again, Andy are not making those same mistakes as now, Ruby. He's just made another one, and that net's wide open for Ducky. And you knew it was a mistake as soon as you just saw it. Ruby hitting this to the sidewall and completely committing to it. It's a free gift. A and D will take it. And they're getting in the heads of Team Ignition, specifically Ruby, who again is making a lot of mistakes that you just can't afford to make against top-tier opponents. Ignition on that offense. We haven't seen much of a semblance of it. Team A and D are vastly superior right now. Ignition right now just feel like they're struggling to tread water at this point here in this game. They've got to be able to succeed somehow. But uh, success will come at them playing a whole lot better than just this. Let's flip out. Let's get a demo on one there now. Tachi's got a demo too. Team A and D will wait on top of this one. As that flick does not come. Ruby. When you get the beat on Bucky. Cody. To the back wall. Ignition. Here's a chance. This one will be popped up high by flip out. Itachi doesn't have an easy play on it. But Ruby wasn't there. And it's Team Ignition again caught out. Ruby needs to be in a better position. Again, he's usually such a consistent player in the back line. Ruby. Just playing a bit too defensively. Team A and D, again, are catching them on what are, quite honestly, some minor mistakes, but at this level, every mistake makes a difference, and you can just see how consistent they are. That's another one. Itachi gets his second. Team A and D have ran away with this game, and they're doing it again here. Ignition may have an answer for that first goal, but they have not been able to score since. It's Team A and D. It looks like they are running laps across this team. Ignition, look for another, off the kickoff. Flip out, we'll find one. Two goals on two shots. It's not been a lot of shooting for Ignition, but they've got a couple in their favor. But they'll need a lot more of that where they came from. And really a lot more consistency overall in getting to offense in the first place. Team A and D just look far too solid in that rotation, in that midfield, and in their overall threatening pressure. Reminds me a lot of that ODU Monarchs team that Flipout was on last season. It was not a team that was overly mechanical. It was a team that was overly consistent in reading each other on the play. Ignition needs to do it themselves. It's a whiff from Ducky. Ruby again not really in the right position. He must have thought Flipout had that one. Nobody there for Ignition. It's a missed opportunity that they really could have taken. It'll go again. Demos in the backfield. Ruby could send this one to Nets. He has. The front post is open. And with 93, 93, 95 seconds to go, Team Ignition battling back ferociously.
Team A and D at this point now. A little bit more huddled, a little bit more de hushed back on the defense. They know the pressure that they're under at this point to hold this lead against a team that's playing the hot hand. Team Ignition back in their groove. Here comes one more. Cody's just off the post. No one from Andy even flinched for it, but Ignition's still attacking. And this kind of pressure, Andy is falling for it as a save from Bucky. It will be sent away. Flip out now. Infield. Bucky will send it away. And a play from Ruby as he'll go to the back wall. He got his own captain and Cody off guard. Bucky's on it. He won't be able to get the touch. Team A and D at this point, wasting all that time. It's Team Ignition just trying to keep themselves closely in range. As flip out in the infield, Cody out to Ruby. This could be a good chance for an aerial play, but Itachi's looking to stop him. Now Ducky, not able to be fast enough past the flip out. Bucky on full boost. Cody will challenge and keep him away. Now Ruby off and still ignition in the midfield. Itachi's going to keep this one out, but a bump there will mean it's still ignition's ball. Flip out. Could not get a touch on that one before Ducky beat, got him beat. And now he'll look for the second. Cleared from Ruby. Still Ruby as he'll meet this one as well in the infield. Cody could not get the shot. The captain is not able to be there in time. And it will be Andy. One more to go. And that will settle game two. Triple match point for Team A&D. They have looked absolutely perfect this series. Their offense has been unstoppable. And they continue to find the offense when it matters. They're only one game away from taking down Team Ignition from giving them their first loss of the season in a 3-0 sweep. And we're coming to the point where we're at the top level of gameplay. We're getting what we're, you should expect here from the top level. These are the best of the best. As Game 3 just about to start. Team Ignition at this point. A reverse sweep is what they need to keep that undefeated record alive. Team A&D are testing them. It's the toughest test of the season. They'll continue to put on that test. Bucky now. Flip reset. He's got the pinch here. Oh, and flip out of the get in the way of that one. Team A&D. Again, not afraid to go for mechanics. Even though we don't see it from them often. This team that just relies a lot more consistency on following each other up. And on just being able to challenge so aggressively. Team that reads that next move so easily, so clearly as well. And the pace that they bring only makes things tougher. You see that pace on full display here. That's another shot on. And already Atachi next to it. Flip out only 20 boosts in the tank. Ignition's needs to be careful how much they're utilizing here because Andy are just stealing it away. Flip out's clear. We'll give his team some time. As Ruby. Going to find Cody and he's almost got that beat on Bucky but enough of a touch there. Andy will go the other way. Itachi to the corner. That one's going to bounce in field. Flip out's not first to it but he... We'll get the dunk ignition stave away. Cody now. Flip out. No redirect. Bucky will be on top of it. Team Andy. Again, responding to this pace, uh, this hastening of the speed here from ignition. I'm bringing their own pace to this game. Yeah, like Andy has always been, it uh, feels like that faster team. Always been able to challenge a little bit faster a little earlier. I think a lot of it has to rely on that boost conservation they've been going for. A lot of this game is them stealing the boost out of ignition. And leaving Ignition dry of their resources. What they really continue to do here is... Another one across the field. Welcome in. Hello, Corporal Monkey Shines. Nice to see you there. Hopefully you're doing well. We really need to cast together again at some point, man. It's been a very long time. Again, hopefully you're doing well, my guy. We've got two matches. This is our first tonight. And uh, looking to... Take down the currently undefeated team Ignition. As later tonight we'll have the Hornets taking on Swordfish Vortex in a challenger matchup. I mean teams at pretty even records. Two and two each. They are in a position where that playoff is not secured for them. And as we're in the penultimate week, wins are going to 
be necessary for these teams. These are going to be the matches that really do determine if you make the playoffs or not. For both these teams, though, playoffs has already basically been secured. But being that team to beat, getting in that, you know, advancing past the, uh, past those first couple stages is a huge deal. And A&D look to be one of those teams. Itachi finally gets that breakthrough. It has been oh, more than half of a game. And it's just one challenge, one dunk from Itachi. And it's Team A and D. Now a little over two minutes away from sweeping ignition, but it will be off the kickoff. We'll say no. Well, I'm struggling here with allergies. Ignition's been struggling with scoring. Every goal matters to them. As Ignition, they're going to need a lot more than just a single goal. We saw last game how many goals A&D can score. You know that their defense is good enough to keep this team out from scoring. As Bucky, now a beat. But Ducky couldn't shoot on that one. He instead, he'll pick it to the sidewall. Early challenge from Cody. Great positioning there to just shut down A&D. It's a lot like how A&D has been shutting down Ignition with these uh, fast-paced plays. Where they kind of realize what Ignition's doing before Ignition even knows what they're, they're doing themselves. And Andy just have this uncanny ability to read the play in front of them. They know when the challenge, they know when not to. They know what's going to happen next. Ignition. Being able to beat a team like that is just so difficult. As another one from Itachi. And an A and D a lead again. Team Ignition cannot catch a break against the side. Could this be their first loss of the season? I don't even think I don't think Ignition has even gone to game five yet this season. That's how you know undisputed like top, I'm a top team they've been. A and D is showing that there's a whole new another level at this stage. Again, they've been able to keep up with those GC3 caliber sides that we saw in the Paradise Crew Battle Swim in the 3v3 matchups at GC1. I mean, they're getting their battles, but they're Definitely taking quite the lead in them. Now, less than a minute to hold that lead as Ignition. Their chance to move upfield, but cut off by Atachi. With a boost to Sperry, he'll get that clear. It's Ignition will have to clear again. Flip out. Sent back in by Ducky. Ruby waiting on it. He won't have an easy touch. Flip out's waiting back. And that's a mistake. Bucky's going to find the top right corner. And Team AND will take insurance. Late in game three, flip out, needed to challenge that one. He gives Bucky far too much space to shoot at. And with the skill level of AND, don't expect them to miss that chance anytime soon. It's team Ignition. With even less time and an even bigger lead, they have to be able to come back from. Oh, it's a whiff from Cody. That's not going to make things easier. Ducky, 1v1. Ruby will get the block, but he's not in net. Itachi, oh, he couldn't score. Bucky will get past Flipout. Off the ceiling. Ruby's first to it, and that's an overcommit from A&D. Flipout needs to put it on, but he's missed the net. Cody to score. It's in. Flipout will make sure it does. Seven seconds to go. Team Ignition, not out of it just yet. The pressure is on them to perform. It all comes down to the kickoff. Team AND, a chance to sweep this ignition side. Team Ignition now, need to keep it up at zero seconds, but that will not happen. Team AND sweep the previously undefeated ignition and will stay the top team in the All Star division. This, this is an unprecedented showing. A team that has been perfect so far this season at Vials against a team that also has felt perfect. You're getting the levels that there are at this stage. Vials sweep team ignition will see this as their first loss of the season. Team A and D, we've seen them before. Keep up to high level opponents. They're proving that that's no fluke. They do it here as well. As what a match that's got to be a free oh sweep. A and D did not waste time.
as again a 3 0. We'll take a look at our schedule here. It's our first match of the night. We've still got a lot more coming. We've got Swordfish Vortex on the Hornet's Nest next, so get into that soon. But for now, we got to get a little interview here with AD. I know they you know, uh, they have just agreed to one, so let's get them here to join us for a short chat after this 3 0 sweep. An unprecedented dominance at the top level, although we've seen teams do this before. Flipout would know it. He was on ODO and Monarchs. They dominated basically every team last season. And now joining us here, Team A&D, taking the top seed by uh, by a huge performance, beating Team Ignition. Bucky's joining us. Itachi's joining us. That's a huge win for this team. Bucky, you gotta tell me about just how important that is for you guys, because now there is really no questions. You guys are the best team here. Oh uh, yeah, it just uh, just making sure we keep playing at our peak level and all the way through up into the upcoming playoffs. You hey, mentioned that as well, and also here joining us is uh, Itachi. And yep. I mean, with with how the season has gone so far, if I'm not wrong, I believe top seeds do get like buys, right? I, I can tell you, but most likely, you think so. Actually, maybe not. Yeah, it, it may not be, actually. You may not, but you, you would get very nice seating. No matter what it is, being that that top seed obviously has a huge importance to any team. Uh, a lot of it has to do with confidence, maybe seating. I don't know exactly. Uh, Flip out might be able to tell me, but he's not here. I, I have a feeling he's probably not going to answer that question uh, right now. But again, you, you, I mean, Itachi, you guys take this one. Feel sweep. It's been dominant so far this season for you guys. It really, as team ignition, did, did this sweep kind of come naturally to you guys, or what kind of allowed you guys to sweep them because you, this you know you have dropped games to other teams in this league but against a team like this this series was expected to be quite close uh, i think it was just our play styles matched up well for in uh, favor for us for sure this is very strange sounding uh, much oh better. my bad i didn't hear that <laughs> Bucky's stealing questions out here yep, That's all right. sorry he wants the fame it's okay it's okay yeah, it's all right. this is your captain but you can't talk back to him so i get yeah. it yeah yeah, but no, I, yeah, like Bucky said, our play styles were just completely opposite, and it just worked in our favor. You know, we're, the aggression was just on our side. We were taking every everything we could get, pretty much. As I did again, it felt like you guys had such a fast pace. You know, being a roster and being players that kind of have known each other for quite a while. You remember, you guys were on Hydro Boost Esports. I know you're on. What, what team were you on before you've been Hydro Boost? Striker? Uh, no. What was it called? We were on uh, Valhalla, and then over to Zenith. Oh, yeah. Zenith. Oh, Nova and Zenith Aces. No, yeah, I, I was. was. I was. Itachi was. Well, again, you guys yeah. have been at top levels. You guys have been, you know, together for a little while. Um, yeah. Playing against GC3 competition in that Paradise Crew Battles tournament. Uh, yeah. Itachi, did that kind of set you guys up to play even better here? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, we've been trying to play higher. You know, we try to play scrims that are higher ranked and they give us more of a challenge so we can just dominate these leagues. Again, as you said, well spoken there. A real sweep. Now, at this point, it's only one week left. So it's six weeks, I believe, in the regular season. It's a short regular season. Uh, but you guys are making sure every single week goes your way. You've probably got one more tough matchup here before you go to the playoffs. Uh, Bucky, what are you guys going to do to kind of prepare for that? It doesn't really feel like you have to do much, but I know for you guys, at least, the work is never over. Uh, probably the same thing we've been doing. Just scrim a couple times a week before the uh, matches and get try to get it as many playing hours together as we can just to get yeah probably just work with our coach for a bit too as well no. yep so far it's been successful for team andy congratulations on that field sweep taking on team ignition here a team that just felt and that i've seen and just looked undefeated flip out having won last season no, no surprise he's made another super team but you guys prove that you are a, are a whole level above them Again, okay, congrats on that win. Before you guys go, let's get some shoutouts here. So let's start with Itachi. Shoutouts, things, anything you want to say? Any last words? Uh, shout out to our coach, Kev. Uh, man puts us through the ringer. You know, he tells us what we need to do, what we need to change, and that helps a lot. And Ducky for recommending some of uh, the training packs and things I do to help me get better. We'll move on now to Bucky. Is there anything you want to say, Bucky? Uh, probably those two as well, as well as our sub decod for just being there in case we need him. I mentioned again. We love decod. Yeah, decod that sub. We didn't get to see him today, but we might get to see him in future weeks. For now, though, congratulations on your win here, Bucky and Itachi, and to Team A and D. Uh, this org has not had a great history on the stream, at least 
at least in the last two weeks have not you guys have had uh, this org itself has had tough times winnings but this is a huge performance and i think maybe maybe this will turn this org's fortune around i know so many teams that the stream is good luck or bad luck for them so maybe this is going to become a good luck <laughs> stream soon uh but for now congratulations on your winner feel sweet for team ignition have an amazing uh, rest of your nights and hopefully we'll see you again very soon thank you you too and I was Buck and Itachi there of Team A&D, a 3-0 sweep there. That's our first match tonight. We'll be back soon enough, but with our second match, Swordfish Vortex taking on the Hornets.
And we are back to the sportiest stream. Thank you all so much for waiting. We're here for our second and final series of the nights here. But let's first take a little recap. It's going to be very, very short because the series itself was very, very short. Team A and D, 3-0 sweep, giving Team Ignition their first loss of their royalty series season. Now we have another matchup, Swordfish Vortex and the Hornets. Another best of five. This one, the challenge version of these teams are anything but perfect. Both at 2-2 two and two records. I have them actually currently in the top 16, so this is a battle for that one. Vortex are number 20, Hornets are number 17. They're both very much capable of doing it. But the question is, will they be able to do it? Well, again, we, we got to see a little bit of the Hornets last week before my router blew up on me, so... Hopefully this week it seems like everything's a little bit better, but Swordfish Vortex slide is actually quite recognizable. This is a Swordfish Vortex team that's been around for a little while. I think the most major player, probably the most recognizable player to most people, would be West Coast Inco, since he was he used to be on Milky Militia. Um, I know a lot of people on this stream will recognize Kalafi, uh, since he was on Swordfish Academy uh, in the final season of the Skyward series, where they did have a bit of a struggle at the end of the regular season. So again, it's all. It, Lafayette's trying to find those teams that he can really be a leader on uh, during this one. As, by the way, thank you while we were off. Thank you for Spartan Dragon for the follow. Welcome to Spuddy's stream. Thank you so much for showing your support here as we're going to get ourselves in as best of five as soon as we can. Pretty exciting matchup here. Again, both these teams at two and two records. Final match of the night. This is basically it. It's only two matches today. It's a pretty short stream overall, but... After how much I've had to do over the weekend, I actually think it's pretty nice that we have a nice short stream here. Because we get to see some pretty nice matches. Again, from the Royalty Series. Again, we'll hopefully get these teams lobby very, very soon. But I know there's a good amount of Swordfish fans out there. Should be showing support any any moment now. We have not seen this order in the stream in a very long time. So, yeah, this is a good time to see them again. Man, I'm still suffering with that migraine. Oh dear. I hope today's not going to be that terrible of a day. Hey. Maybe, maybe a little drink will help me. Let's see if maybe this will help my migraine. Okay. Helps a little. Okay, maybe, maybe I'm just a little dehydrated. Could very well be the case. I haven't had a too much. I haven't had a ton of drink, so could be a good idea. But for now. We'll just keep uh, this series up underway. In just a few minutes, we'll be getting ourselves started uh, with both these sides. They both have kind of flip-flopped this season uh, between wins and losses. Obviously, they end up here in the Challenger Division. Said the playoffs. And that top 16, really, that's where you need to be in. It's that top 16. It's within reach for these teams. The Hornets and Swordfish Vortex. 17th, 8th, and 20th seed, respectively. Big match for them in deciding, and often, and potentially deciding, who actually will get their chance at the playoffs here. A loss here could potentially mean the end of your season for these sides. That's how it's getting specifically for Swordfish Vortex. They do not have that buffer of being... Of, again, I've only been at 20th seed. There's a lot of teams above them that they have to be able to surpass, which isn't unlikely, but a loss here is only going to make things tougher for them. It's going to require them to get a win. If either of these teams win this week, very likely they'll be able to secure their spot in the playoffs uh, as well. And next week, or at the very least next week, they'll be able to control where they are on that table. So... Well, these sides, the pressure is on them to be able to show up. But one of the fun things about these rosters is that obviously we've seen this Hornets side before. And again, we haven't seen Vortex, but we know. I've seen this roster. I've, I've heard of this roster so much. I've been able to see a good amount of them. I think another fun thing to talk about is the fact that the Hornets are led by Cody, who we just saw last year's Team Ignition. Did, he did get swept. So uh, hopefully that bad mentality, that, you know, rough losses. Not gonna come back to bite him here in this series. I did see kind of in between the matches, but he mentioning on uh on X that or Twitter, whatever you call it, that was probably his worst series ever. So he's not feeling amazing today. So we'll see if maybe that bleeds into the series. We'll hope it won't, but as again we'll get in this match any moment here for either the side swordfish vortex with K9 Skulls Coffee and uh, Corruption and Cinco all in. So they got all four of their players in the lobby here. And for the Hornets, we'll see who they play uh, tonight. But I know they usually have subs as well. So we'll see how this goes for them. 
Should be, I think, hopefully it'll not be a sweep like the last series was. Although, who knows, at this level anything can happen. It is Challenger after all. But usually Challenger, as a division, is enough pretty good intensity, pretty heavy challenges. Who knows, we might see a sweep here. Although, generally speaking, Challengers usually a little closer than All-Star and Premier are in their matches. So, we'll get to see it though. We'll see. Again, our last series of the night. Make sure you show support. Fiction poll is live. To vote for either Swordfish or the Hornets. You know the Hornets, we are waiting on them to join on in. They should be here any moment. As yeah, my migraine is really getting to me, my goodness. I'll hold on, don't worry. Hopefully. I'll hold on. It's not gonna be a very fun feeling. But hopefully throughout the night I'll throughout this match I'll feel at least good enough to continue on. Now the Hornets have been waiting to be on stream. They almost had it last week, but again, that router being the major issue. I'm happy that they do get their chance this week. And hopefully they'll be here in about a minute or two. Should not take too long. As again, we'll wait on updates. And messages and all of that good stuff. Before we get things going here. With both these record with both these teams at two and two records, not gonna be easy to do. Again, we'll get to see how they play here. Again, Swordfish Vortex. Of oh, Swordfish Esports, if you didn't know already recognize that. I think I mentioned that a couple times, but again, they haven't been on the stream in a very long time, so always good to have them back. Cinco specifically has not been on the stream in a little while. A lot of these players, even Canine Skull, I think from that Milky Militia org, so... And this is kind of like a Milky Militia and Swordfish crossover, but obviously it's represented by Swordfish Esports. As again, we'll just, we'll wait a little bit. They should be any moment here for the Hornets, but the thing is, it's our last match tonight, so we get, we get to wait a little bit. Hopefully everyone is doing well out there. And we're just waiting on these teams to join on in. Once we get this series going, you all will know it. It'll be a good one. It'll be best of five. Again, all matches tonight since they are regular season are best of five. But again, with it being the second to last season of the, of the regular season, second to last week or say of the regular season. These teams being, you know, not in the top 16 yet, wins are necessary to get there. So, it's a big match. It's going to be definitely a lot, uh, definitely telling to a these players, I'll, uh, you know, how they're going to be able to perform tonight. And Swordfish Vortex, patient and patiently waiting. One it should be here any moment, though. I did get a message from Cody that they are not here just yet. They'll be here in just a moment, so we'll wait on them. But as soon as they're here, we'll get this series started. And you all get to enjoy it, as will I. As there they are, Armani... Crimson, waiting on that third. Cody's also in, and Briz, there you go, Brizzle's in, so. That'll be their three players representing the Hornets tonight, here against Swordfish Vortex. Thank you all so much for being so patient. We'll get our series underway, our final match tonight here. Both these teams at 2-2 two two records, a playoff spot could be up to grabs, and this is a match I really do want to take. The best of five, here we go. Swordfish Vortex in the blue. The Hornets on the orange. Welcome to our final match tonight here in the Challenger Division. And this one again has a lot more implications than that last series. Was. That last series, sure that top spot being up for grabs is always a fun storyline, but all those teams that already basically guaranteed their spots in the playoffs. These teams have not done that yet. So they need wins. This is a very important match and Gloppy, but I get that shooting started, but it has bounced off his own teammate in corruption. Swordfish Vortex will have to sit back. A9 Skull and Vesco Singo both having been teammates there, but taking up K9 Skull. There he is with one. Swordfish Vortex already on the board here. As a straight just punt up the field by Cloffy will find K9 Skull, and he's got the beat on Crimson. But how aggressive the Hornets were, they immediately had this backtrack. They didn't have the time to do so. 
quick start for the Swordfish side, but they've got to be consistent here. Knowing this roster, they've, again, been teammates for a while. At least a lot of these players have. Canine Skull Corruption and Cinco have all been teammates under that name of Swordfish Vortex back in ATS's Ascension Cup. But they had an okay season. I don't believe they made it to that top eight. I believe they, even, they may not even made it to the playoffs, so it was a tough run for them, but... One of the issues they had, that obviously, was that rank difference. The ATS Ascension Cup allows teams of the champ free rank to play. As you can tell, this team, champ one, champ two. As they are now against the Hornets, Armani. Demoed by Cloffy there as he goes after Crimson. Armin having to go back again here. Crimson with another clear and seeing a lot of these heavy touches from the Hornets. You want to see them try to keep control here. They're not doing that so well. Swordfish Vortex. Again, always making sure they try to find that second touch. Always having a plan there. The Hornets need to keep uh, some plays themselves. Not give the ball away. And that might do it there. Armin for the chaos. We'll tie this game up with the Hornets. A little touch off the back wall. Pump as well from the Swordfish Vortex side on themselves. We'll give the Hornets the space they need. Swordfish Vortex again off the kickoff. Trying to bring that immediate, you know, pressure on. And Luffy specifically getting in that bumps there. We are already seeing tons of bumps and demos in these teams. Not afraid to use it. Something that so many high-level teams don't actually go for. And I'm surprised we don't see more from these from higher level teams because it is such a useful uh, skill to have especially at this level or really at any level you know it's also useful just getting on the ball Armin will do it again the Hornets take the lead it's just out of nowhere he just pops out there from the side corruption did not see him and it's the Hornets who are now up by one This game still far from over. As the Hornets, another clear. Maybe potentially to go up 3 1, but they'll be stopped in the midfield short. Corruption, that will be easily kept away by Armin. The Hornets are waiting on this, but a challenge from K9 Skull will try to keep them away. Crimson now gets the dunk on Cloffy. Corruption, not a very good touch. Crimson will be first to it, but he's with the ball completely. Swordfish Vortex, here's a chance. Corruption will hit it well wide. Potential back pass, potentially, but. It does not work. The Hornets break through. No shot on the end of that play. They'll have to go to defense again. Corruption. Can't get to it. As Crimson will look for that long touch. The back wall. Buffy will clear, but Armin's waiting. The captain of the Hornets. Getting involved in any way he can. And now he's found the midfield. Swordfish Vortex. A lot of double hits and a lot of over top playing over top of each other. There seems to be a lack of trust from these players. They need to be able to trust each other. That's, at this level, if you want to be in the playoffs, you've got to be a solid team to do it. Double commits just aren't going to get you very far. Especially with time being, uh, you know, a hot uh, commodity for them. That's not going to be uh, consistent. They're not going to be able to have a ton of time. That's only going to waste that time as well. Valuable seconds take it off the clock. That is seconds that the Hornets will utilize to... Keep their lead at what it is. Swordfish Vortex again looking for that end. Corruption. We'll have Clockfree to jump for him. Armin on the 50. Still Clockfree to go for it. And he's not a bad at once. He's definitely a solid one point player in Clockfree. So you gotta watch out for him here. But you gotta watch out for that pass too. Corruption's gone high. Clockfree to find it. Crimson with the block. And the Hornets will keep this one close for now. Swordfish Vortex. Utilizing those passes, again, that's the trust that we need to see from the teams at this level to be able to punch into that playoff bracket. Hornets have definitely given themselves a lot of trust, but so has Vortex in these passing plays. Which team is going to be able to come out on top? So far, it's been the Hornets, and as time winds down, Vortex have to find something else, and maybe this is it. Cloffy just wide. Rizzle, who not only has actually been all that active this game, is on the 50 on that one to keep it away. Armin now scored both goals. The Hornets will look to be the one to lead them out of this game as well with those two goals. Again, he's caught on the defensive line. Corruption can't put it on. Armin will 
Actually, not be able to get it. Crimson will instead. And now the Hornets will clear this ball away. It's time. Winding down to the final seconds. Game one will go to the Hornets. I don't know if they'd call that a strong start, but they'll take it. Armin specifically leading this team. Two goals on five shots with five saves as well. It was really Armin's game. And I worry for the Hornets going into future games because this is definitely just a game where Armin just played exceptionally. Is this something that, they, that they can happen consistently? I don't think so. That's where the issues may come for this team. I really need to see a lot more, specifically from Brizzle with less than 100 points this game. Just was not all that active. And again for the Hornets, they got away with that game. It's having a Armin that was just playing a whole lot better than the rest of the lobby. I don't know if he's going to do this again, but Hornets can't rely on it. But as we go into game two, that's the Hornets who will be up by one. Even with that game having been as factured as it was, it's Armin who was able to lead his team to victory. And who will step up? Is it Brizzle? That's going to go just wide, but already a better start from the Hornets than we saw last game. In terms of who's getting on the offense when. Brizzle himself, again, was the quietest player on that roster. It felt like he was never in the right position to make challenges. Now he is. And so get a dunk there. Cloffy will cut this one away. We just see a lot of Cloffy for Swordfish Vortex leading this team. He's, again, a mechanical player. He plays a lot of 1v1s. Definitely got it what it takes to. Definitely, you know, put Swordfish Vortex on his back. Although, again, we're not really going to see it from him. He's generally a more defensive player than what we see out of Armin on the Hornets. Speaking of Armin, here he is. Off that sidewall, he's actually going to look for that infield play. K9 Skull is having to backtrack here. And that should give the Hornets some space to work with. Corruption. Out towards the corner. Will be challenged by Brizzle. Buffy demoed, but... Swordfish Vortex won't be able to get this one away. Armin to the back wall. Oh, K9 Skull Swift. Crimson could shoot, but he's missed it completely. And the Hornets will send it wide. A great opportunity set up by Armin on that double tap. One whiff from, the vo from Swordfish Vortex and it nearly cost them. Here's another chance. Armin just wide in it again. Again, he is still searching to be that team leader, Armin. I mean, if he can do this again... Swordfish Vortex are going to be in a very difficult position to deal with because Armin himself can definitely take over. He has overcommitted here. Corruption towards the net. Saved by Brizzle. And it's the Hornets who will have to get themselves some offense. Brizzle, where on earth is he gone? Oh, Brizzle. And he really has no one else to blame on that but himself. And overcommits in the highest order. And he doesn't even have a chance to challenge that as he turns the wrong direction. Brizzle just far too hesitant. And that will be Swordfish Vortex to take the lead. Hornets offense, what was you know, something in game one that was able to kind of strike early. Not been able to do that so far this game. Love lines on Armin and you're getting that sense that Swordfish Vortex overall just has a defense that can deal with one player at a time. The Hornets need to be able to on themselves being able to commit and play aggressive, but they haven't gotten it here as that net's open. K9 Skull Corruption is a weird one. That's not really what they were planning, but I'm sure Swordfish Vortex won't complain. As Corruption completely overshot this one, he did find that back pass though, which completely cut off Brizzle. And it is Swordfish here who are now at a two goal lead. Again, the Hornets. Realizing the error of their ways are just too defensive. Corruption, another one. Swordfish Vortex fighting back with fury. As the demos ring out, it was the Hornets who got that one. Still, it won't do enough to shut down Swordfish's attack. And with how the Hornets are playing, this is going to be quite consistent for them. Gotta be able to push up though a lot more easily because Swordfish Vortex can definitely do this over and over. 
the team full of offensive talent. And they are not afraid to utilize it. If the Hornets give them the space they have been, which, again, they have been sitting so far back, as space for a swordfish has come to them. But now, a dribble, Armin, flip reset. Will not see that final touch made, and the Hornets will have to try again, but that touch to the sidewall, Canine Skull, his chance bumped off. Hornets will collect this one off the back wall, or at least you think they would with Brizzle, but he's missed it. Armin, though. With space, dunked by Canine Skull. Crimson's got full boost. This has got to be a glare, but he's whiffed it. Canine Skull with another. Another for Sword First Vortex, that is. Four goals to none. Game two. A wiping from Swordfish Vortex. Definitely a response that was asked there for them to make. And as game two will almost certainly come to a close with the Vortex side winning. This will mean we'll have probably a tight, we'll have a side series here. Game three will become that next game, but really, Swords Vortex, what is gonna be important about that is the momentum. They gather it, they collect it, and now they can utilize it as well if they are able to keep this game with this kind of intensity as they do again in the midfield. Whiff from Crimson, Brizzle's on low boost. He'll just get enough of it to clear a corruption. Not a great first touch, it'll be a Hornets to collect, and Brizzle, infield, Crimson to the back wall, but no shot on the end of this easily from Armin. Swordfish Vortex will clear it again. I'm taken there. No easy space given, but the Hornets again are backing off. This team again just wants to sit back, they don't want to take those risks, they don't want to send one and one player upfield, and that's going to become their undoing here against teams like Swordfish Vortex. They've got to be more willing to take those risks, but they just can't make them work. Now they have to, but this one a demo from Cluffy. You'll have space looking for goal five. Canine Skull could not put it on. But Swordfish Vortex, another challenge. will keep this ball away. Cluffy, one more, but will instead force two of the Hornets defenders to jump. This one's open. Canine Skull will make this two for himself. Five for Swordfish Vortex and a five goal lead. I mean, time is already basically running out. That top six placement really does rely a lot on this win for these teams. Swordfish Vortex won it just that badly. The hell, this game is gone. Well, they de it just feels like they maybe won a little bit more. They are definitely bringing that offense that we were waiting for from them. But an answer, Brizzle will put one in for his team. May come a little late, but... They definitely need to make sure that they are able to slow the play down, at least somewhat. There's this one. Well, near a 10. Swordfish Vortex in with that goal against them. Still a dominant performance. Still a great game, too. Actually looking to continue this here. One more? Oh, that's just going to be saved away. Canine Skull won't be able to get that one easily. But this Vortex will eventually let this hit the ground. That's game two for them. And with what we were able to see, just a solid performance overall there in game number two. It's what we should be expecting from the Vortex side. This is a team of offensive type players. It's a team that can play that aggression. I'm going to see them do it continuously here. But for now, that is, again, only game two in this best of five. It could be a very close matchup. As we'll get back into it here. Match point determined here in game three. EFH Stadium, our usual map to see this on. And for the Hornets... The work is on them. They've got to be able to prove that they can shut down that Swordfish Vortex offense. Because again, that Swordfish Vortex side just going to have that offense kind of whiff them here. They're going to continue to try to score as much as they can, as often as they can. They know the Hornets like to play back pretty far. I need to see the Hornets play off, but they just can't get that spacing. As another goal goes in here, the first of this game, and it gets Corruption, who wastes no time 
and swiping that one past the Hornets. 12 seconds in. Swordfish Vortex back to the races. It will be the Hornets who need to respond. Armin nearly did it there, but again, I need to see someone other than him be able to bring the offense for the Hornets here. I've seen moments from Brizzle where it feels like it could be him. Yet he's not been able to take control of this series. Again, Armin had an incredible performance in Game 1. Again, he had to make five saves just to keep the Hornets up by one. He had to make five shots just for his two goals. That's how much this Vortex side is making the Hornets fight for these wins. Or I guess win. They only have one so far. How much the Hornets going to have to fight for every single win, it feels. Less we see more from Crimson, more from Brizzle. But this Vortex, not afraid to commit upfield, not afraid to play what the Hornets don't want to play, which is that aggressive offense. Much more offensive, much more highly pressured. They want those chances, they want those shots, they're going to get them as well. They're going to make sure that they get as many as they can on that net. There'll be another clear. Canine Skull. This one sent back by Armin. Bounce will... The one that will favor Cloffy and he'll leave this one for K9 Skull, who's got a good amount of space to work with here. He'll go down the line. K9 Skull still. Swordfish Vortex again at this point. Not only are they wasting time, they're getting themselves upfield as well for that second goal that could really extend this lead and really put the Hornets out of very viable reach. The, the bump there. K9 Skull will get the save from inside of his own net. Armin now to the back wall. Care option. Cloffy. Cloffy will call for this himself. Swordfish Vortex do not look comfortable. And back wall left relatively open here, but the Hornets have not been able to get rid of those back wall touches faster. Swordfish Vortex have been able to be saved by maybe a bit of slowness on the side of the Hornets when it comes to when they decide to shoot. But a little bit of a break in that rotation. Good chance for the Hornets here as Armin. Trying to rake that offense, but Corruption's already stopped him. Buffy won't reach this, but Corruption will. Swordfish Vortex, another chance to net. This one, Corruption, oh, he's completely missed it. And cloffy has got to get back. This one's on, but Cloffy, that's that 1v1 uh, mentality for you there. Does not panic. That's that ball dropped to the front of his car. Swordfish Vortex are right back to going for offense again. Corruption, long touch. Brizzle, does he have it? No, he does not. And it's another one for Swordfish Vortex. Corruption beats Armin, and that's all he needs to do. Brizzle was on low boost. He just didn't have enough to reach that one and save it with off his crossbar. And the Hornets. Stuck on defense again. Just cannot seem to be able to shut down the Swordfish Vortex offense and yeah, Swordfish Vortex pressure up the midfield. They do it again here, and look at how open that net is already. That's just from one touch from Swordfish. Now they can mix a couple more in together. They'll put the shot on. They're definitely looking ready to really attack that net, but that touch from Cloffy won't help them. Corruption. Arm in. Flip resets. Will utilize it here, but he's beat by Canine Skull. We'll see this one to the back wall. Second touch, and it's Swordfish Vortex again. 3-0 in the lead. With only, only about 90 seconds to go. Once again, the Hornets stuck. In that ruts of not being able to get anything to work for themselves. This series could go very poorly for them if they don't find any responses. It's now Cloffy. Armin will see this one away to the back wall. Armin. A9 Skull jumping, but it's Crimson who will beat them both. The Hornets. Have not given up just yet here in game three. That goal may be able to kickstart a comeback here in the dying moments. The Hornets now need two more goals. They have enough time to do it. Easily enough time to do it. Gotta be able to utilize that time wisely. As that touch of Marmon won't do that well. Canine Skull has kept this one up for corruption this one on target and it's a miss from Brizzle corruption will be given credit and he's got a hat trick three goals corruption scoring often 
here in this Royalty Series matchup. Hornets again just feel stuck. They do have an answer. Oh, thought that would be in Crimson. Still searching, but Rizzo won't be able to win that challenge. And I'll give I'll prevent the Hornets from potentially being able to get another goal and keep this one at two goal differential. McLaughlin will give it to them. Flick in front. Corruption to make it five. And that's the Swordfish Vortex offense that we've been able to see. Cloffy again, 1v1 player. That's the 1v1 play you should expect from him. He can definitely beat these Hornets defenders all by himself. When he's got a teammate ready to finish off that shot, it only makes things easier for Cloffy to succeed. Off the kickoff. The Hornets still not able to get up field. Cloffy to the ceiling. On this one, it's corruption! Saved by the corner. K9 Skull. Just looking for one more goal to really make the Hornets' life difficult. As if it isn't difficult already. Just like last game, it's Sorvis Vortex who give themselves such an insurmountable lead here to the Hornets who, again, just have not been able and not been willing to push up field. Sorvis Vortex, again, a much more aggressive side. And they're willing to let that, that offense speak for itself. As the Hornets, dealing with every single play imaginable, it feels at times. As a clear from K9 Skull will prevent that one from the Hornets. No chance on offense for them. In fact, Swordfish Vortex will see this as another 5 1 win. They're now on match point. But these last two games have been 10 goals combined from Swordfish Vortex. You do worry if the Hornets have any chance of coming back into this one. Because again, unlike game one, we're not seeing that you know, dominant performance from Armin. He's still trying to lead his team, but again, a lot more of this is much more well-rounded. He knew Armin wasn't going to be able to do this consistently. And Swordfish Vortex are definitely making sure that the Hornets recognize that. As we're moving quickly into game number four. The Hornets. Do they make a change? Do they have a sub? They don't. Crimson's going to come back in, so... Car swap for Crimson. Maybe they'll be able to... You know, allow the Hornets to reset going into Game 4. Anything's better than letting themselves go down by this many goals against Swordfish Vortex. For now, Game 4, Swordfish Vortex. Just look like the team that brings the offense to a team that wants to play that defense but just can't break out. All Swordfish have to do this is, is, is do is do this again. And this series will be theirs. Game four, match point for this uh, Swordfish Vortex side. The Hornets have to win from here on out. And again, with the you know seeding into the top sixteen, at risk if you lose the series. The Hornets have to play as if their season on the line because it very well could be determined by by this match. Doesn't matter if you just miss out of the playoffs or if you miss out by a while, you still miss out. Your season's over. The Hornets have done so, have played so well, have done so much to get to this point in the season. I they want to be able to kind of prove that they can go to the playoffs, but Rivers Vortex have shut that down, that idea quite quickly. And they'll go for another one. Corruption really should have shot that one on. He really should have had the goal there, but a whiff and the Hornets will be bailed out of that one on defense. Crimson now. Cloffy. He'll be directed into the corner. Now an infield pass. Brizzle will backflip. And the clear from K9 Skull will relieve any tension on the Swordfish Vortex back line. They'll have to go all the way back again as Crimson challenged by K9 Skull. Cloffy will look for that clear, but straight to Brizzle. Bumped away. Still gets it on K9 Skull, who doesn't have much left in the tank. Won't even get the touch on that one. It'll give Hornets some space to work with. That's Cloffy. Swordfish Vortex just looking for one to add to themselves. That one nearly was it, but again, just wide of the net. The Hornets, watch as it will now go by. Swordfish Vortex again just winning out the midfield here. Another strong challenge, although they are being demoed away. Back to Surface Vortex are winning these challenges in the midfield. Should be do enough for them to get those chances on offense that they are looking for. 
chances that have given them, again, those 5-1 game wins in both games 2 and 3. And here in game 4, just looking for that first one to go in. The Hornets, though, looking to answer. Demo from Crimson. This one in front. Corruption will call it himself. And now he's 1v1 with Ar Armin. 50 to the corner. He'll be left in the midfield. Luffy to the back wall. No second touch there as he's gone uh, far too far away from it. So if his Vortex will have to I keep this one upfield as long as they can. As K9 Skull, back pass, Cloffy can't read it. And it's a free chance for the Hornets. Bump from Crimson. Cloffy jumping, Corruption is two. So if his Vortex quickly running low on boost. Cloffy's got to get to this one. Oh, he doesn't do it easily though. As Swordfish Vortex. Just trying to get any challenge on this ball. Canine Skull. The sidewall will pinch this one to safety. And the Hornets. Well, they're still attacking aggressively. Although Swordfish Vortex do have the ball. His Canine Skull again on low boost here. He doesn't make things any, any easier for himself in this position. But another clear will go away for the Vortex side. At this point, the Hornets... Holding down that midfield, but they won't hold down that as Corruption. Stopped early by Brizzle, but a demo. And a bump as well. Cloffy clearing uh, the space here for K9 Skull. Up he goes. The flick. Can't get it. Corruption to go for net. And the bump will connect. Swordfish Vortex have been waiting for this moment. And finally it will come. K9 Skull couldn't score. And Corruption shot it was not initially going to be enough, but the bump will do it. Goal one to Swordfish Vortex. And there's only 94 seconds left here in this game. The Hornets have shown they can hold offense, but they've not been able to do it consistently. And with time running out, it's not about this. They can't play that slow game anymore. They have to bring the offense. They have to bring it relatively fast. As Cloffy has this one. Looking for another, but Armin will wait on it. Canine Skull takes the dribble. We'll leave this a fake corruption. 2-0. Swordfish Vortex with another one. All eyes run Canine Skull. People thought maybe he had that flip reset on the end of that one, but he ever went for it. Always had corruption as his option in that midfield and had to utilize it there. Two great effects. Swordfish Vortex up by two. 65 seconds left. Time running out for Hornets in this series. There's another one now in the midfield. Cloffy trying to get the fake. Oh, but he could not get the flick as he liked it. Hornets will look to try to clear this one out. Says Corruption. Armin won't be a fan of that one, but to the back wall. Now, Cloffy, the beat. This one cleared away. As the challenges continue for Swordfish Vortex. Armin. Corruption. Crimson. Cloffy. Slow roller. Brizzle will say, but as committed for it, Armin. Just throwing this ball away. That's going to give Swordfish Vortex even more time. But they don't win the challenge. Crimson to the net. Oh, Armin. This one to Brizzle. And it's one back for the Hornets. 20 seconds left. Don't count them out just yet. The Hornets still have life in this series. But they need one more goal. And there's not a lot of time to do it. It relies a lot on the kickoff. A win here. And surely... They'll give themselves a chance. Crimson will take it. The Hornets need to go up for but that touch will get by to the net. Armin redirect. This one not on. K9 skull awkward. 10 seconds and counting. Corruption, the clear. The Hornets racing back, but this one will be hit to their back wall. And time running out. Armin, one more chance. K9 skull will deny. Crimson. Can't keep it up. Brizzle now. He will have a tough time. But this one's still alive. Swordfish Vortex, though. We'll hit this to the ground on the goal line. Swordfish Vortex take the series in a free game straight after losing game one. Did not come easily to this Swordfish side, but they'll take this. No matter which way you look at it, a solid performance. Again, with the fact that Playoffs are no easy place to get to. Swordfish Vortex will be happy with that win. The record now positive 3-2. 
it's again it's got to be a good thing for this team not just because obviously as you mentioned the playoffs being so as tough as they are to get into in the first place I mean, if you just take a look at that yes you know, i did close out the page one second took a look at that challenger division there's a lot of teams in this division running there are 45 separate teams only the top 16 i believe actually make it to that final bracket so they gotta do better than just okay to make it that far you gotta do very very well No guarantees that you'll be able to make it even with that win, I think, for the side. The Hornets, their season could potentially be irreversible at this point. As, again, a 3-1 win, they'll take it. Sure, again, it's a very good feeling for them just to... And get that win. It's definitely one that they needed at this point in their season. We'll get an interview here with the players of Swordfish Vortex. Again, this was our final match tonight. If you take a look at our, again, one last time on our schedule. And deal 3 0 sweep. Vortex with a 3 1 win over the Hornets. Pretty solid performances from both these, from both the winners here tonight. Just looked a whole lot better in their matches. And just waiting on them as soon as they join on in we'll be good to get things going here at this interview is now they are welcome in canine scully 3-1 what win. is going on couldn't take game one easily there but if you do take the next three it looks very consistent overall i would say in your match tonight here and uh, especially with your team you know not in that top 16 not in a perfect position that, that's gonna be a very important win for you guys it's also just gonna be one that feels good for your season having been as kind of difficult as it has been Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like you said, the first game, I, I was telling the guys as soon as the game ended, I was like, that was just real sloppy. We're all real nervous, uh, but we kind of locked it back in. And then, I mean, clean sweep at the end. That was really nice. Um, yeah, I mean, this whole the whole uh, season, new team, Cinco stepping down to become like more of the uh, the co-captain slash sub has been really awesome. Giving us the chance to just, uh, you know, navigate feeling what feels great for the team and then we, we had a huge talk prior to the season starting where we we're just like, hey, if anyone feels bad, let us know straight up. And it's it's been really nice to have that uh, have that secondary or the uh, fifth guy, Cinco, just being there. And so that's always been awesome. Playing with Corrupt, absolutely astounding. And then Clothy just absolutely putting the glue together. It's been it's been really good. I mentioned as well, again, that change of Cinco going because he you know, used to be the captain for this team. And again, he, you, you know, the Swordfish sort of Vortex side was kind of led by Cinco, talk to me more about kind of that decision before the season and the impact that it's had on this team, maybe more in depth, because it's a pretty big change to not have Cinco playing. Yeah, I mean, uh, for Cinco, we kind of talked at the end of the last season, and he was like, hey, um, you know, I don't, I don't think he's ever lost the love for the game. I would never say that. However, he's like, hey, you know, the stress of being the captain, trying to put everything together, trying to pull the guys together, I can't do that it's putting too much uh, of a toll on my mind so i was like hey you know what if we try this co-captain what if uh you kind of set up the games but i'll rally the boys and he's like you know that gives him a chance to settle down and do his other hobbies that he likes but he still has that opportunity to say hey boys i'm feeling it throw me in and we're like hey go ahead so it's it's been really nice he's he's very much uh he's definitely sounded more happy about the decision and i think everyone in general is just very much uh vibing with the changes we've done yeah, but this season has been one that has not been easy for you guys. Again, it's 45 different teams. I think the playoffs are going to be in that top 16. This win matters so much to it. I'm sure the playoffs at least had some factor into what and said you guys today because <clears throat> those had to be on your mind, the fact that that top 16 is within reach. Yeah, I'd say, honestly, um, I mean, besides single bringing up every once in a while, me and the boys are not really thinking playoffs. We're just thinking once, uh, one game at a time, and we're just thinking, uh, you know, if we can get a clean sweep that looks better than winning, you know, 3-2 or 3-1. So that's always just, you know, one game at a time, win it, and then go on to the next one. And then if there's anything to adjust, we adjust. But, yeah, I mean, I think playoffs will come. And I think it's not even just a confidence thing. It's just a, uh, 
just feeling feeling good about the game and then if if we're meant to be there we're meant to be there and i think we are i think we're definitely in the the top 10 of the teams in our league so i think we can i think we can make a very good run for it there's only one week left that spot is not secured so uh, for you guys i'm sure there's gonna be a lot on your mind what are you guys gonna do because that stress of that final week you you guys in that in your position if you don't win next week there's a good chance you won't be making it so you know how do you guys feel kind of towards that stress of how uh, next week is basically a must-win position for you guys? Honestly, it's not even stressful. We're not, we, I've never stressed about this game at all. Um, I, I think we're good enough. I think we could be, like I said, top 10, if not top 5. So uh, winning straight up is always the goal. You know, 3-0 sweep, that's all we need. Um, and if, if it happens to be, you know, 3-2 or 3-1, whatever it is. But we're the mindset's never, hey, these guys are tough or these guys are going to beat us or everything. It's like, no, we're going to get a 3-0 sweep. So uh, I think I think just chatting about it, it'll be fine. Uh, I don't think anything changes. I think the game plan stays the same. So we just go out there and win it. As you said as well there. Well said uh, from you there. Again, a congratulations on that 3-1 win. Before you uh, leave, before you join the rest of your night, we got to get some, uh, we got to get you to get some shout outs out here. So now it's time to say anything you want, K9 Skull. The floor is yours. Hey man, I appreciate it. Uh, I always want to shout out you. Appreciate you for the stream. We've been here. I've been with you for uh, man almost a year now with the other league and then or the other uh, org. Uh, always shout out to Swordfish. Appreciate me uh, giving me a chance and then Cinco for reaching out. Corrupt, fantastic, clothy. Been love playing with you guys. Let's keep it going and uh, yeah, that's awesome. Appreciate you. Of course, congratulations on your win, K9 Skull. Thank you so much for joining and actually, and congratulations on that win. Good luck in making it to that final back uh, into that final bracket. Thanks, man. That was K9 Skull there of Swordfish Vortex, a 3-1 win of the winner. Just thank you, Bubble Knuckles Esports, for the follow. Welcome to the Spuddy Stream. It came just in time. We're going to raid out who's live right now. That's a good question. Ah, I see. There's someone live that we should go raid. Let's go get a raid here to a good friend of mine. Thank you all so much for joining the Spuddy Stream here tonight. Congratulations to the teams that did win. Again, thank you all so much for joining. Have an amazing rest of your night. Take care.